Welcome to Form 1040 EZ. This is Lesson 1. Our objectives are to understand the requirements for filing a tax return if you are a dependent, to know important tax dates, identify key tax documents that you need to complete your tax return, and to understand the requirements for using a 1040 EZ versus a 1040A or a 1040. Okay, if you're a dependent, meaning somebody else can claim you, and this is often the case if you're in high school or you're not on your own yet. If you have unearned income, meaning interest or dividends, things like that from a savings account or a mutual fund, if that is over $950, you'll need to file. If you have wages or earned income over, over $5,950, you'll need to file. If you have some self-employment income, and we've talked about that, if it's over $400, you'll need to file. And finally, if your combined earned and unearned income is more than 950 or earned income plus an additional 300, you'll need to file taxes. So think about if any of these are true for you. If they are, then this will be important for you because you'll need to learn how to file your taxes. Important dates, January 31st. Most of the time you will receive your tax documents by the state. Companies are required to send them out right after the tax year ends. So you should receive your W-2 from your employer or maybe a 1099 with interest or if you have your own business in which you work predominantly for one company or one person in which you make more than $500, you'd probably receive a 1099 for that income as well. April 15th, very important date. That's your deadline to file and pay your taxes. Now, you can file for an extension, a six-month extension. However, it's not an extension to pay. So you have to pay your taxes if you owe by April 15th. Otherwise, you could be subject to penalties and interest. Okay, so how do you know if you can use the 1040EZ? The 1040EZ is the easiest tax return to file. So if you can use it, it would be worth it to use it. So, questions. Is your taxable income under 100000 Is your interest income under 1500 Do you only have income from wages or interest or some of these other items? Um, if you and your spouse are both under 65 years. If your filing status is single or married, you do not have adjustments to income. You claim only the standard deduction. And just so you know, you may claim the earned income credit when you are filing this form. And you cannot claim any other tax credits. So this is a lot of information. The key things are income. You have to be under the income threshold. You can't have any children, and you mostly just need to have wages. If you fit into this category, then you can file 1040 easy. So what do you need? Well, you need to gather your W-2 from the different jobs you have, and these are sent out by your employer, as we discussed and any 1099 that shows interest on it. Now, you may not receive a 1099 even though you earned some interest from a bank account. It depends on how much you earned. You need to keep track though for your tax return. Also, make sure you have all your personal information, especially your social security number. Okay, let's try a practice. We're going to use the W-2 and the following information to fill out a 1040 easy tax form. Um, in this case, Jose is single. He wants to contribute to something called the Presidential Campaign Fund, and that's a box you can check on your 1040 EZ, and I will show you. He has $150 in taxable income. That's from a savings account. He is not a dependent. He can't be claimed by somebody else. He's an accountant, and there's his phone number. Here's a copy of his W-2. So he had wages of $36,000. He definitely falls within that threshold. And here's a copy of his 1099 showing the interest that he earned. So again, he is under the unearned income threshold. He can file a 1040 EZ. So how do we get the forms? Well, you can always go to the IRS website, irs.gov, and I'll show you that. If you go to this website, you can see that there are forms and publications here. If you click on that, you can go to current forms and publications or prior year forms and publications if you want something from a previous year. You can also type in the search box for what you need. So if we wanted to access the 1040EZ, I could click on current 
And then under find, I could type 10, 40, easy, and hit return. And here we have form 1040 EZ and the EZ instructions, which will often have your tax tables and other tables that you need. So let's go ahead and go into the 1040 EZ. Now the IRS sets this up so these are fillable forms, meaning you can type directly on these forms, print them out, and send them in. If for some reason you open these up and you are unable to type, just save them to your computer, open them up, and you should be able to type. Okay. Let's go ahead and fill in his personal information. In this top portion here, you'll see, and I'll draw a box. So right in here. And so this is going to be important to make sure that you fill in completely. And notice I've already put in Jose Cuevas here. Okay. Then we would put in his spouse if he was married, but he was single. And then really important, his social security number. Well, we don't actually know his social security number, so we'll make one up. And that'll work. Then his home address. If you're, if you're filling it out for somebody else, you can always find out the home address from their W-2. So if we go back and look at his W-2, 1909 13th Street. So we'll go ahead and fill that in. Now that we have all his personal information filled in, we need to look at this presidential election campaign. This is on every tax return. It says, check here if you or your spouse is filing jointly, want $3 to go to this fund. Checking a box will not change your tax or refund. Okay, he said he wanted $3 to go to the presidential election campaign. So we would check that box for him. Finally, now we're on to our income. This first section in here is all income. So if we look at this, this will keep track of all the income. Notice that we have wages, salaries and tips, our interest, some unemployment compensation. So there isn't a lot of different types of income you can use and use 1040 EZ. But we do have wages if we look at his W-2 right here, 36,000. $24 in wages. We can type that in. Now there is a spot here for cents, but the IRS is okay if you leave off the cents. Those are immaterial amounts and you can just round. Okay, next he did have interest and his 1099 shows $150 of interest. So we can type in the $150. He had no unemployment compensation. And then if we just follow the instructions on line four, it says add lines one, two, and three. This is your adjusted gross income. The adjusted gross income figure is often amount that you need when you're filing your state tax return. It'll ask for your adjusted gross income figure. Sometimes if you're trying to access your return from a prior year, they'll ask you what was gross income in, in the past year. So that's an important figure to know where to find. All right, if we move on to box five, it says if someone can claim you or your spouse, it's a joint return, as a dependent, check the applicable box. So if your parents still claim you, you would check you. If you are married and both of you, you and your spouse's parents still claim you, then you would check both. If no one can claim you, enter 10,000 if single, 20,000 if married filing joint. This is your standard deduction, and everybody gets a standard deduction. If you are head of household, you get a different standard deduction. If you are a qualifying widower, there's another one. So automatically you get $10,000 right off the top of your income. And then if we follow the directions, it says subtract line five from line four. And this will be our taxable income. So if we subtract, we get 26,174. Now, here's where you determine whether you are going to owe or whether you're going to get a refund. Right here, payments, credits, and tax. This is where you're going to report the federal income tax withheld. If you qualify for earned income credit, that would go in here. And then you would then adjust by adding those together to find your total payments and subtracting that from the tax. So let's try that. Here's his W-2. 
we can find his federal tax withheld here in box two where it says federal income tax withheld. Notice down here there's a state tax income withheld right here too when you're filing your state return. But we want to take this number, the 3602, and we want to put it on his tax return. So we've typed in his tax, 3602, that he's had withheld already. And we just carried it down here to line 9. He did not qualify for the earned income, and he did not have any non-taxable combat pay election. So we've just carried it down here. Now on line 10, this is where we determine if he pays or he gets a refund based on what he had withheld. So we need to find his tax. In order to find the tax, it says use the amount on line 6, so we have 1,174, that's his taxable income, to find your tax in the tax table in the instructions. Okay, remember when we went to the irs.gov website and we found the 1040EZ and there was also the 1040EZ instructions. So if we go back to the IRS website, these are the instructions. And if you'll note in the, in the table of contents here, we have tax table for 2013 on page 29. Let's flip to that page. And here's our tax tables. Hopefully these look familiar to you. All right, it says if form 1040EZ line 6 is at least, but less than. Remember that his taxable income was 26,174, I believe, which would fall right in here. So he was single, so his tax is 3,480. And we just type that in right there. All right, he gets a refund if line nine is larger than line 10. Well, line nine is larger than line 10, so he gets to subtract and take the difference. That difference came to $122. So Jose is getting a refund of $122. Now there's a couple ways that you can choose to have your refund paid to you. You can have it automatically direct deposited into your checking or savings by providing a routing number or an account number if you're interested in doing that, or they can just send you a check. You don't obviously need to worry about line 12 because you don't owe anything. If you want to have another person be able to discuss this return with the IRS, then you would put their name, phone number, and ID here. Finally, the last step for you, sign your return and date it. You can put your occupation, and you could put your phone number here that was provided. Okay, that concludes how to fill out a 1040EZ. When you're ready to mail it, notice down here it says, mail your return by April 15th, mail it to the address shown on the last page of the instructions. The instruction books are very important for you as far as figuring out your tax, knowing where to mail your return, and reminding you about the dates. All right, well hopefully this was helpful and you will be able to fill out your own 1040 easy.